Hey guys, a uh, very special uh, bonus episode today of the Joshi Pod. Uh, we have the co-hostess with the mostess, Farah Hasnain, who's joining me. And it's very important, important she's joining me today. Uh, it's because we have a real special guest and I want her to, to make sure my facts are straight, my <laughs> stories are right, because it's, it's really important. Uh, we have Kai Kobayashi, Kobayashi if I'm probably butchering your last name, but Kai Kobayashi uh, online with us today uh, from Terrace House fame and uh, world traveler. So uh, Kai, Farah, welcome to the Joshi Pod. Hello. Thank you. So Kai, uh, we'll, we'll get into the deeper stuff a little bit later, but let's, let's first talk about how <laughs> I read a little bit on your, your, your profile and background. You've okay. been everywhere. Uh, yeah, mostly in like Southeast Asia, like maybe like Thailand, Vietnam and stuff like that. In a very exotic Arizona. Oh, (laughs) exotic. Yeah. (laughs) Very hot. Yeah. It's 110 degrees in San Diego today. I was like, man, it's it's like I'm living in Phoenix. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's too hot. Too hot. (laughs) How, How did you, or why did you travel so much and end up in all these different places? Uh, well, my dad's an architect for like a Japanese company company and, uh, he just travels around Southeast Asia. I think he was like, like the top dog of Southeast Asia. So they like make him travel different places, get on the projects and stuff. So I just hanged on with him and, you know, traveled around and it was a pretty cool experience, you know, cause you don't really get that experience like, like as a, you know, a, a normal kid, you know? Mm-hmm. So having that experience just, I think it helped me a lot, especially now. So do you, do you think, I mean, having to change schools and stuff, I, I was, I'm a military kid. So my, my father moved around a little bit too, and we moved a little bit as well. So yeah, and I, I'm very thankful. I mean, at the time I didn't really like it, but looking back now, I'm very thankful <laughs> for it. Yeah, but, yeah, but changing yeah. schools and, and doing things like that, how was that experience for you? Um, it was hard from time to time because I would have to, you know, make new friends every time. And, you know, some places it was easy because maybe in like Japanese school in Thailand, you know, I would just play like basketball or soccer with everyone. I'd be like automatically connected with everyone. But uh, sometimes it was hard, especially in like the U S because, you know, when it becomes like in high school you know when it becomes on like a break or something like that you don't you guys don't really get together to you know play a sport or something like that we all just hang out with our small close of friends mm-hmm. so yeah that, that was a little hard for me what about like changing mean, i'm i can only speak one language pathetically but what's it like like switching having to like switch language from language to language to language and, and be proficient in school at, at all of those <laughs> Um, well, I, like maybe in like Thai, Thai or like the Malay, you know, I didn't really learn that stuff. Um, or Vietnamese, you know, I, I only know like the bad language part of that. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> the easiest way to get into a language. Yeah. <laughs> What's the worst say, worst word you can say in Malay? Oh man, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I can get, I, I don't think I can get that out, you know? Okay. Okay. I might get banned. <laughs> I'll, a, I'll have to put an explicit uh, thing on the podcast. I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So your father, how did you end up permanently like now in Japan? How did you end up like, is your, 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 you're in your destination now. How did you end up this time in Japan? Um, so I've never lived in Japan before this. So in the U S I was playing golf pretty seriously. Um, I was trying to become, you know, probably the best golfer that you'll ever see but um (laughs) doing that every day you know i just didn't feel the passion or i just didn't feel that i loved golf enough to be at the level that i want to be and so i quit that um what age age are we talking about um it was like 22 or 23 Mm. yeah and then so i quit i worked for like starbucks in the u.s for like maybe eight months or something like that and i didn't find anything Okay, hold on. Time out. Time out. Time, time, time um, yeah. out. I got a Starbucks question. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not a Starbucks drinker. I'm not a coffee okay. drinker, but I have a question for you. Do okay. you guys purposely not listen to names and misspell names on purpose? 
Um, if we don't like you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> How would they spell Kobayashi on a Starbucks cup? <laughs> oh no, they probably wouldn't even try. <laughs> just put a K on it and give it to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, time time back in. Sorry, I interrupted your story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I worked in Starbucks and. I didn't see a future. I wanted to change. So I was like, well, I've never lived in Japan before. So I would just go to Japan. And first I lived at my uncle's house and then I lived at my friend's house. And then I started um, acting school. And then yeah, from there, it was, I don't know, it's been like four or four years now. So you're talking about acting school and, and, and things like that. I mean, what, what motivated you to, to even attempt that or, or look into that? Um, I think I just like to be in front of people. I like to make people laugh. I like to um, just be in front of people, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's something that, you know, gives me a rush or, or like some wanting to do something and that gives me the energy. All right. So I'm a white dude and <laughs> you're you're a multi or multi ethnic person. Do you think that would help you becoming an actor in Japan that you have a, a different look than just the average Japanese? Does that even in your thought process at all? Uh, not at all, and it okay. probably like hindered mm. my chances <laughs> because there aren't roles for like people who look like me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Does knowing English help at all? Um, not for a role, maybe. Mm. Yeah, it's, I just to be honest, I I don't even know why I wanted to go to an acting school in Japan because. Japan probably has like the worst movies or mo- worst dramas. <laughs> <laughs> they only have like good anime and shit. So you, know. you got the voice for anime. You could do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. So, <laughs> what are some dramas you watched that were just brutal? I'm, I, I don't watch Japanese TV, but <laughs> especially dramas. I don't know, <laughs> man. I, 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 I don't even remember them because they're so bad. Like, I don't know. Like, even the acting seems fake. The production seems fake. And, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think there's a market for it. <laughs> so, you, uh, so you, you're you going through acting school and then uh, Terrace House. Yeah. Is, is that how that popped up? Uh, so, after acting school, I went into an agent and probably after maybe like six months after being an agent doing like do this extras um, going to like movie sets and drama sets. And they had this, they asked me, you know, if I wanted, wanted to join and try out. And so I, I watched Terrace house before um, with my friends and stuff. And I, I like, I liked it. And I was like, yeah, for sure. If there's a chance, you know, why not? So I went in and I just, I just, I was myself. So the, I think I got in there. Yeah. Okay. So if you hadn't jo- joined Terrace House, what would you think you'd be doing right now? <laughs> just curious. Oh man. That's a hard question. Sorry. Because, yeah. <laughs> because I can't I, I can't even imagine my life without, you know, being out there and, you know, being in front of everyone and, you know, people who, who like me, you know, they would want to follow me. And that's why I'm able to do more of the things that I want to do, like, you know, yeah. like draw or like paint. Uh, recently, I've been like trying to make music. And so that's something um, i don't know maybe maybe i would still try to be making it um doing movies and stuff yeah. and and that's something that i probably wouldn't want to be doing <laughs> so so going into terrace house i mean your your, your plan was used that as a platform to to become more famous in japan 
I think that's part of it for sure. And I think that's part of it for like everyone. Mm-hmm. But I, I think for me, I, I just, just wanted, there's a chance of me meeting people that I probably would never meet or would never be able to meet if I would just, you know, just lived on my own. Um, there's, and there's a chance to, you know, live with three pretty girls and, and a big house, you know? <laughs> who would want to do that? <laughs> yeah, who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> you know, so I had to get in there. Are there any room for overweight white dudes in the next season? <laughs> <laughs> I'll if sign there up. Is one, yeah. I, I'm not as handsome as you are, but I'll... I'll... <laughs> <laughs> Send in like a recommendation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So did you, uh, what was the, uh, the process as far as um, uh, auditioning and people who saw you? What was that whole process like? Um, you start out with like a group. There's like two people um, interviewing you and there's like four people they're interviewing. And then from there, um, but even in like the group interview, when we had a group interview, as soon as I like heard other people talking, I was like, oh man, I, I think I'm, I'm probably going to make, make this mm-hmm. because they weren't themselves mm-hmm. when, you know, they ask questions, you know, they're trying to please them or they're trying to like be in a character to, you know, be liked by that person. And so I was like, oh, I'm probably going to make this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, so yeah, I did another group interview but this one it it was like with like nine people and then it was solo interview and then there was solo interview so there were like four interviews total that was that was a lot so the interview you mean solo interviews like one-on-one with producers or with other people that are potentially could be in the in the house oh no producers okay is that intimidating at all or you kind of just like if it happens it happens not not (laughs) Mm, not really intimidating i guess i think i think at that point i was like and my confidence was way up <laughs> i was like yeah um if i if i can just be myself just talk to them and you know just have fun with it and yeah, i'll make it so yeah. yeah so so being a, a world traveler in a world like liver you know you you've been in other cultures and things like that mm. do you think that was an advantage for you going in 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 being able to talk to people in a little bit different than the other people in the room? Yeah, for sure. I, I think the biggest thing is like, I have this huge, pers- a bigger pers- perspective than, you know, a person who has lived in Japan only because I can, I can understand, uh, you know, even songs in English, if we're talking about Jay-Z, you know, what, what is he saying and how, what is his view of the world? And I can actually understand that, you know? And, Mm -hmm. and so if, um, if I can understand the language and then I can understand the culture, you know, my perspective just is way bigger. And so I can, I'm able to adapt more and I'm, I'm able to, you know, not, not be, one-sided not be plain or i don't know yeah yeah so were you always this confident or was this something you built up over time um i think i've always had this self-confidence yeah. of you know just i'll be something mm. you know if, if i just keep working at it and you know i'll be something i i still believe in that um through through my art and through you know stand up as well just if i tr- if i at least try you know it, something will come out of it and so i, I think i was confident but bef- even before that that um day that i had the interview like probably i don't know how many months maybe like 5 or 4 months before that i broke up with my girlfriend and i think even that boosted my confidence because I had to go out there, you know, and like yeah. try and make something out of my life because <laughs> I was miserable at that time. So yeah, you have to bring yourself up. <laughs> miserable because your, your, your career wasn't where you wanted to be. Your life wasn't where you wanted to be. Yeah, for sure. You know, it was just um, breaking out with a girlfriend. You've lived for three years mm-hmm. and 
you have nothing, you don't have money and your electricity at your house is like, it's not even working because you haven't paid. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just like stuck. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it it was a, I I just had to work on myself. You know, I just had every single day, what can I do right now? Mm -hmm. And I just kept doing that. And you know, now I'm in, a pretty good place you know it could be better of course but mm-hmm. it, it it's pretty awesome so is it like uh, american idol when you get the, the ticket to go to hollywood you get the ticket to go to terrace house at the end of the process <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> they don't uh, um, they don't give you a prize like you're going to the chocolate factory or anything that you're uh, <laughs> really no, or anything like man. that oh <laughs> i wish <laughs> I should get like chocolate or something, you know? <laughs> so, so how do they give you the news that like, Hey, Kai, you're, you're going, you're, you're in the house. Well, yeah. They even text me. They're like, Hey, Kai, you're going. And, and the, <laughs> and, and, um, that was like on Tuesday. Right. And so that, yeah. Hey, Kai, you're going on Friday. Wow. It's like three days later. So <laughs> that was pretty crazy. So like no time to prepare, no time to get nervous, no time for anything. It's like get over there and get in. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and how did the filming work? Because uh, I remember when you were entering the show and they don't show your face in the beginning, they were filming you talking to your family, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's that process like for your family? I mean, being their their privacy is getting invaded yeah. right away because you decided to make a decision to go on Terrace House. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, my mom's always been supportive of me. And that, I think that's like the best part about you know my family my dad and my sisters you know i've been i've been trying you know different things in my life like even golfing even like acting now i i don't even do acting but they understand that you know it it all um connects and that it connects to what i really want to do and and so they've been really supportive of me so i was like uh they want to they want to um, take me talking to you going on Terrace House. And so she was like, oh, yeah, for sure. And, you know, even my sister came out. So so anybody, cool. anybody in your family kind of outgoing like you are? Or are you kind of the, the, the oddball of the, of the group? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really outgoing per se, you know. <laughs> but, but you're willing not, to go out on, on national TV. So that's a little more than, <laughs> than a lot of people would do. <laughs> oh, that, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you're a stand-up comedian, too. So you got to be able <laughs> to. <laughs> you have guts to go out there and do that. Yeah, well, I, I got to build that guts too, you know. <laughs> but are your um, sisters are your sisters that way? Your, are your parents that way? No, I I don't think so. No, I don't know. I they it, they don't seem like the per- person that wants to be out out in front of everyone. You know, mm. it, they, if it feels like they want to, you know, just be with the crowd. So I I don't know how I got there. <laughs> yeah, Kai, did you need attention as a little kid? <laughs> I, I probably I probably did because I had three older sisters, right? And I never got the attention. So Me too. I got three older sisters as well. I'm oh, the baby yeah. boy. That's I'm crazy. the baby boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now now you only need to be on Terrace House, right? Yeah. That's and gonna go, yeah. Season. I'm gonna follow Next your season. footsteps, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's day to day? I mean, like real world, like Big Brother and all those shows, like they have to kind of like stay in, in kind of in the group like especially big you seen big brother before right big brother uh the tv show no i've never seen Big. okay brother. so anyway it's, it's kind of like where a bunch of strangers come and live in a house and they can't leave terrace house is a bit okay. different where people can kind of come and go and, and live their lives and come in the house yeah. what's it what's the commitment like for uh filming for terrace house what did they kind of tell you before you went in the door what the, the commitment was Mm, as far as like your time commitment um not there's not really a commitment um they just want you to live your life they just want you to do do the things that you have to do in order to live like a like um working or um other gigs you know and they want to be part of that i I guess Mm. so the process would be like Oh, I have this, this tomorrow. And they would like, okay, so let's, if you have time, when you come back, you know, we can film something or something like that. So 
I don't know how to say this without sounding like a, a, a dope here, but so like setting up as far as like you're walking in the front door, do they know you're coming and set up a shot for you to walk in the front door? Uh, yeah. I, like even if I had to go into the house, you know, they'd be like, I have to wait a little and then they, I guess they'd have like a go sign and then I'd go in and yeah. Yeah. Start talking. So how comfortable was it to do that? Mm, I think it was okay for me because it's just, for me, it's just the interaction mm-hmm. or the talking. If that's, that's real, you know, it, it's. Mm. There's a fine line between documentary and reality TV. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, true, yeah. And, and unscripted television or whatever they decide to call yeah. it nowadays, you know. Yeah. Where, you know, parts of it's real, part of it it's not. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's a really weird thing to talk about, I think, you know, uh, about reality TV. And it's just, mm-hmm. uh, it's all in our culture so much now. It's in the world culture now. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So when like you guys go sit like i'm gonna ask you really stupid questions tell me they're stupid if they're if they're stupid fair you can yell at me too and say eric don't ask stupid (laughs) questions but like just when you guys decide to go sit on the couch and talk is it like hey guys we need two people to go sit on the couch and talk and people go do that or you kind of guys just do that on your own uh just on our own It, it just happens you know if we're just chilling on the couch and then they would set up the cameras and they would just probably start filming or um, unless unless they wanted some some talking in like the boys' room or something like that, mm. I guess yeah. Yeah, re- re- reality TV is just blows it blows my mind. It really does. <laughs> just the, the whole idea of it, you know. It's I, I think you're very brave to to do something like that. So, um, uh, what 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 part of it blows your mind? just uh <laughs> it's like wrestling <laughs> it's yeah part yeah. of it's real and yeah. part of it's not real <laughs> yeah you, you know and you gotta kind of you, you kind of decipher which ones which parts are real which parts not real and you kind of yeah. suspend disbelief at a certain point and just accept it all as real but knowing at yeah. the end of the day that none of it's real <laughs> yeah i think one thing for um the show was like I think like the setup and, you know, having to wait and all the stuff, you know, not happening on time of just us living, you know, that's not real, of course. Mm-hmm. But I, once we start getting into it and we start talking uh, with the people around us, you know, I think those conversations are real because the the words that come out of you, you know, mm-hmm. those are your words, you know, all, all the things that you say. That's why it, it's hard for some people to or some people got bashed, even though they're like a very good person, Mm -hmm. you know, is because they're, it it comes out, you know, their attitude or the words they use, you know, so it doesn't click with some people. And so they get bashed online. And so I I think that's part of it, you know, it's real, but you know, some, some places, you know, just even like the setup, you know, Mm -hmm. like if it's wrestling, you know, the whole ring, that's a setup. And that's not, that's not like, uh, but Kai, you talked about you know yeah. you you went through the process and you you heard people that just say what they what the producers wanted to hear. Certain some of those people, I'm guessing, got through and actually got a, to be part of the cast as well. You know that they they yeah. it's so here here's my challenge with and I, again I don't make it's confrontational or anything like that at all. But my yeah. my my idea of of reality TV is that one person like yourself could have the best intentions and go in and, and speak real but you yeah. don't know if the other person who's talking back to you is speaking, you hope and you have the best, yeah. you have the best intentions and the best thoughts in mind, but you know, yeah. you, you don't know if it's a hundred percent real, what's coming back to you. Yeah. And, and I think that's part of, you know, after getting off the show, I, I didn't, it was hard for me to just, just be normal again and just um, trust people. Mm-hmm. Especially, I I was really um, 
closed and I, I didn't use my phone for like a month. Didn't, I, I didn't care if I got like texts or anything. I didn't reply to anyone, you know, just been with my family, my close friends. And so I, I think that's part of it. And I, that is true that, you know, I don't know if that person is actually real, but mm. Mm, yeah, I think that's the hard part. What were some of your first impressions of the people in the house? Uh, I feel like everyone's, everyone's pretty awesome. Everyone's fun. Everyone, um, there, we didn't, I, I don't think we fought as much as, you know, maybe it's like some other members because people were more open, especially like Vivi and Shacho and they were more open to, you know, saying something to if, if I'm in the wrong or if she's in the wrong, you know, the, we come out and talk, but, um, uh, but I noticed that it's, it's hard to like click, like really click with people that you really don't know. And you get like thrown into this house and there's like five other people and a click that would like last for a lifetime. And I think that was, that was one thing that I really wanted to find going into Terrace house. And, you know, even after the show, um, I talk, I talk with Ryo sometimes. I talk with Shacho probably the most often. Um, but everyone else, it, it's, um, I think it stops, stops there or stops there or, yeah. I see. Um, I wanted to go back and talk about like some things that happened on the show. So I'm, I'm kind of curious about your hair actually, <laughs> because <laughs> when you came on Terrace House, you had this long luxurious hair, like out of a shampoo commercial, but then... <laughs> <laughs> Like halfway through, uh, you actually decided to shave it off, and um, actually, Hana herself shaved your yeah. head. Shacho yeah. also shaved your head. Yeah. On I like your shirt, by the way. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I wore it on purpose. <laughs> what a sucker! Hey. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah. So. Um. And uh, I, I think when I saw the advertisements for your shirt line with Shacho, your hair yeah. is still shaven. So I'm yeah. wondering, is there a specific or significant reason why you shaved your head? Or was it just some random spontaneous thing you decided to do? Um, long hair, I felt like I was closed off. I, was, I felt like I wasn't 100% myself. I wasn't able to, you know, be out there. And so I thought 2020... I thought I thought it would be like a very good and different year than other years. You know, some some active or like some a good year for me to be changed or be a better person. And so by shaving that, you know, I I have nothing to hide from, and so I just have to be myself and you know be out there. And so I I thought that would be like. A good thing for me, good change for me, and you know, just try something new. So that, that was, that was I, I, I thought it was a good decision in the end. <laughs> yeah, it's good too. In your hair, like even though it might seem like a small change, it makes a whole different mood. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah like because sure. uh, like for me personally, like for I've lived in Japan for over six years now, and oh yeah, nice. I've, yeah, and like I've worked at public school, and I had to be a trans like interpreter at city hall. So okay. I wasn't allowed to express myself, you know, Japanese. Okay. Work, yeah. 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 Know, they're quite very like, close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're very conservative. And then my contract ended in March. So yeah. once my contract ended, I became a grad student here. So I'm allowed to have any hair color. What? And I was oh, like, nice. I have to dye my hair pink. I have to dye my hair pink. <laughs> 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 this totally changed my mood. Yeah. Like, I yeah. Yeah. And then my, yeah. more myself. Yeah. So yeah. I it. It's, I think that's interesting with hair, especially because I think even if a slight change, you know, it gives such a different impression to other people. And yeah. if that impression is like, especially good, you know, you become even more confident. So yeah, that's cool. Cool. You get to dye your hair. Right. All the colors. <laughs> <laughs> 
So was was cutting your hair a little bit of a cleansing too, like a, a changing move moving forward kind of, you know, you talked about some struggles you know, you had with the exes and things like that. So yeah, for sure. You know, you got to leave that all behind, you know, just cut it off and, <laughs> you know, just be, be yourself, be the new you and that helped me. <laughs> new year, new year, buddy. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I noticed you mentioned that um, you were mostly close to Shacho and Yo. Yeah. Um, but did you get to talk a lot uh, with Topas and Hana? Because I know all of you are kind of multicultural people living in yeah. Japan. Yeah. And your your experience is quite different because you were a third culture kid while they were raised in Japan. Did you notice any similarities or differences uh, with shaping your identity? Who? I think for me, it was hard to form a relationship with Topaz. Yeah. Um, because like even we would just be talking and in the boys' room and I, I tried to talk to him and, you know, just saying random things. But I felt like he really didn't open up to me mm. as much as I wanted him to for for me to be able to, you know, just – be more open with him just have like a genuine conversation something like that but yeah I, yeah i think that was hard especially you know in japan we we have this talk of just the outside talk uh, like you know, uh, yeah 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 and i i don't really like that <laughs> <laughs> i hate it <laughs> Kind of, explain, so, kind of explain to listeners what that is. Explain to Eric what that is. <laughs> it's like it's like where you know you're just having a conversation just to have a conversation, and you don't want to offend that person or you don't want to um, be yourself as much, and so you just say words that sound like something, but they don't really mean anything. Mm. <laughs> Did, did you always encounter that uh, before you came here? Or was that something you had to encounter by living in Japan? Um, I think I just started noticing it. I, th I think even before I would probably do it, you know, because that, that was like engraved in the culture. Yeah. And so I would probably be doing it. But, you know, at, at some point I realized that's, that's a waste of time. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be fake. And so just talk what I feel like. And yeah. Yeah. Like being honest with yourself. <laughs> yeah. What was your first impression of Hana? Uh, giggly. <laughs>, <laughs>, Laughs a lot. Um, very nice, soft. Um, uh, sh she thinks of me as a person, um, an individual um very pure very pure you know like even just crying about someone because she likes him but that like doesn't come back to her and you know that 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 hurt her emotionally at um some place in her heart and so mm -hmm. she could just be out there and be herself and cry and you know maybe ask for help you know just talk to someone and so I, uh, that's pretty cool yeah there's there's an innocence and naivety to that a little bit which is i i wish i had yeah. sometimes you know yeah yeah <laughs> instead of kind of being jaded in, in like you know and emotionless sometimes you know yeah it, it's hard to just be yourself and you know express your emotion to other people especially like if 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 it's like there's like other people that you you know but you really don't know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah tell us some fun things you did with han in the house i'm curious tell us some good stories uh we made pretty good pancakes <laughs> <laughs> those were pretty good um <laughs> we went to trampoline so actually that that was pretty awesome we're like we went to trampling is because before that, you know, I was thinking, okay, where do I want to take her out? 
to you know have fun and so i was thinking trampling and so i asked her a hey, um let's go out somewhere like outdoors or like you know just something physical and she was like oh let's go trampling so i was like what <laughs> we have the same mind you know <laughs> so that was pretty cool um what what's she like i mean like having personal comment i mean people are very fascinated by her before all this went down you know because she just she's a star she was she was a star you know yeah. from the first time you saw her there was no doubt that she was special she was a star but what's it yeah. like to have a, a regular conversation with her not to be like a, a wrestling conversation with her <laughs> um very pure because you know it, she's she's in the conversation you're talking to her you you'll get mm -hmm. a reaction you'll get an answer and um i don't know it, it, it's it that just makes you be able to open up more mm -hmm. yeah. and so you're just talking without you know having to think about anything and i think that's that's like one of the best best things you can do yeah it's a wonderful quality for she had yeah i think that's what i really liked about watching this show i think the scenes with you and hana were my favorite because you were always giving her very sound advice on how you know <laughs> she shouldn't give a fuck up if you likes her or not she's still an awesome person yeah you know? yeah and um even in the kyoto trip i know like you had some challenges in that yeah. time but at the end um you and hana had like a solid i think confrontation Mm -hmm. And she seemed to have grown since then, and she had a mature conversation with you. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. that's true. I I think that's one thing that when we were talking in Kyoto, she was able to see me and my um, struggles, and she understood them, and so she she accepted me for who I was. And so she was, yeah, she gave me, you know, some advice and that was pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah. And you, I think like while you were living at Tara's house, you made a lot of art and you gave her this big painting of her too. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, about smooth, your that's a smooth move, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you made, you made like two paintings, right? Like one you gave on the show and like one you uploaded on Instagram a while ago, I think. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The the pink spirit, yeah. Yeah, that. Mm. Um, and about your art, I'm curious about like what your inspirations are, what media you like to use, and if there's any pieces you're currently working on. Um, yeah, there's there's a current piece I'm working on. Um, I found my style. I found um, what's me, and so I found this style where. If there's a painting in a gallery with like a thousand different paintings, like you would know that, you know, th this is painted by me. This is painted yeah. by Kai Kobayashi. And yeah. so I found, I, I finally found that style. And so I just yeah. need to like keep expanding on it. And so um, I use oils with like oils for the reality, but I also wanted to picture like emotions. And I feel like emotions aren't very, realistic or you it's it's hard to paint that realistically and so right. if i can use that with a different medium of you know vibrant vibrant colors um those two like very sur uh, surreal picture and um uh, abstract way of expressing your emotions i think those two collide and it creates a new 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 style and so I, i'm just working on that um inspirations just living you know just yeah, this, just yeah what, what do i what do i think what am i thinking right now what what do i want to do right now what's what what music am i listening to what's uh what what do i want to tell the world um what's important to me, what kind of story can I share? And so. So Kaiser, you know. is the artistic side of you come later in life or were you always kind of uh, expressing yourself artistically? 
Um, I think I would express myself sometimes through maybe like dancing, singing, um, drawing a little bit, and yeah. And stand-up comedy as well. Yeah, stand-up comedy is Talk- pretty hard. Yeah, tell me. I don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah, like, I've, I I've done an open. I've done an open mic night once, and I regretted it. Yeah. So, <laughs> Strawberries regrets? Even berries. <laughs> There's regrets. You regretted it. What was your joke? Let me hear yeah, it. I don't even remember. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> he, he it was bad. It, it was bad. No, it was bad. <laughs> but uh, I, I mine was bad too. Mine I laughed was at myself. Bad too, you know? oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You get to laugh at yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only person laughing, right? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, my mom wasn't even laughing. I was like, come on, mom, come on. <laughs> Help me out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got a paper bag she put on her head. <laughs> yeah, it's so talk hard. About, yeah, talk about that experience of doing stand-up. Ooh, um, I had to challenge myself, you know. That, that was I – I wanted to do it, and so I, I, I did it without even thinking what the consequence is. And so I thought I was hilarious at that time. <laughs> at that time? And, yeah, at that time. Um, looking back at it, um, that wasn't even funny, close to funny. So it's, it's hard, but I, I love it. I love it because it gives people, it makes them laugh. You know, it makes them forget about, the shitty parts of their life or the parts they don't um, that's hard for them at that moment. And, and that helped me too, you know, at the very start when I, and when I watched stand-up comedy. And so I, I wanted to do that with other people. If I could do that, that'd be pretty awesome. And I did it. I failed. Um, I tried it again. I still failed. And I'm still, I'm still trying to find, you know, what's funny to me. What, what is my voice? Mm-hmm. And if I can find my voice and my perspective, my nuance, um, I think I could do, I could, I think I could go pretty far, but it's just like a process of, you know, but before I was trying too hard, I was trying too hard to, you know, trying to be funny. But when you try to, too hard at something, you know, it just gives you, negative feedback so. try too hard overthink and yeah just everything yeah yeah <laughs> what was it like doing that on on tv <laughs> <laughs> um i wish i would have done a different joke <laughs> 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 something you know <laughs> but you know thinking about it, it Actually, I'm glad I did that joke, even if it's not a joke, because it was it was a for me able to <clears throat> pull out the reality of Japan yeah. onto a network of people watching around the world. You know, if we see Japan from the outside, it's all like butterflies and rainbows and animes. That's but, true. you know, <laughs> but in reality, it's pretty crazy. If you think about these people, Japanese salaryman working from like eight to 10 at night and then go drinking outside and then coming back the next morning every single day for like six days a week. You know, that's, that's not healthy in my mind. So I had to get that out. And yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember like when you said the joke on the episode and uh, I remember the confrontation with Vivi and all that stuff. But I was like, but what you're saying is like, you're not making fun of it. Like you're just saying it as yeah. a fact. Like it's true. It happens yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like I just moved to Tokyo and I used to visit Tokyo like once a month anyway. But every time yeah. I, go to Tokyo, I would see this happening. Yeah, you know? it's like it's something that people need to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something that's like they hide it for some reason. I, um, I, even the people <clears throat> that are experiencing it, they know it's wrong. They know it's like not right, but it's hard for them to take an action to do something about it, and you know maybe change their lives in order to have a happier life. But it, it's hard to do that. So, 
Yeah, that's true. And I think I read somewhere that you wanted, or you you also said in your Instagram video, but you also wanted to start an NPO with uh, Kyoko, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, still in the talks. It probably might take a little bit of time to get that going and up and running. Um, but I really want to help. Uh, I want to make awareness of, you know, what, what, what can people do if they need help? They need someone to talk to, um, you know, because by talking to someone, especially if you don't know them at all, you know, sometimes that, that could make you open up more. And what, once you start talking more about your opinions and your state of reality and those kinds of things that helps you understand yourself that helps you understand why you do certain things or why you don't do certain things and so if we can um, have a platform of of people being able to call in when they feel like that and i think there are some places that already have that platform but if we can step up that and you know have yeah. that awareness around with everyone like if, if everyone in japan you oh this is the number to call to if i feel like this you know th th yeah. i think that that would change a lot so that's I something so i want to do yeah it's really interesting how <clears throat> in japan with the social climate here people have outlets but it's not necessarily like talking to a therapist. So for example, like, you know, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. hostess clubs and host clubs are really popular <laughs> and people have idol culture and they put- I love the maid place. cafe. I went to one one time. <laughs> yeah. And I noticed uh, like, especially when salary men, like they'll get wasted as fuck. And then they go to the host, yeah. the hostess yeah. clubs the bongi, yeah. and they're like ranting to them. Kind of. like, they treat them like they're a therapist and they can solve all their problems. Oh man, that that's an interesting perspective. <laughs> yeah, like therapist, like, yeah. Like they have all this pent up emotion that they can't let out, so they use nomikai and enkai, and yeah, yeah, establishments to let it out. But it's I not necessarily. Yeah, I think it's just hard harder for them to be, um, not more genuine, but just be more open with the people. Yeah they are close with especially right. their family or their friends and is I think, it a macho showing weakness thing or what what is it what do you think it is what is about not sharing in in, in not um sharing in, what, what's the 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 difficulties they're having in their lives i think they're just embarrassed they're just scared mm -hmm. to <clears throat> be vulnerable you know yeah it's, it's it's hard for you to be vulnerable so you make up make up something or you say something and you you tell your your wife that it's okay you know even if it's not mm -hmm. and it's, it's just you trying to be happy without trying to cause any emotion i mean commotions mm -hmm. because i think some people are scared to have that real talk and be vulnerable and um, get help. I think that's some a mentality of Japan that it's 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 embarrassing to get help from someone. It's embarrassing yeah. to you know say the truth of how you feel, and I, I don't think that's a good thing. So if we can so change that. So in relationships and dating and stuff, Kai, over in Japan, yeah. as well, is it kind of similar to that when you're, when you're courting somebody and you're, you know, you're having issues in the relationship about being open and talking about the issues in the relationship or is it, is it different with the relationships? I think it's harder because um, sometimes I wish people would just be more open with me and maybe my faults. I know it's it's hard to, you know, just call out other people and be like, oh, hey, I feel this way about you. But I think if if we can do that, you know, there's a way we can find together mm. instead of just having to be by yourself and, I don't know, not not be open with that. And do people just kind of pull the parachute ripcord and get out of relationships or instead of talking? Is that generally what the, what they do? 
Uh, well, yeah, for me, even <laughs> I had an experience like maybe two, uh, like three, four months ago. Um, I met this girl. Um, I was, and I thought, I thought we were in, in a good relationship. Um, we probably met like four, four or five times and we were just, I was just sexting or calling her and I called her once, but you know, after that, sh- I, c- I couldn't contact her. Like, you know, she just ghosted me without saying anything and I still haven't wow. talked to her. So it's like, it's something like that, you know, if if you didn't feel a certain way about me, you could, you can just tell me. And of course that would hurt, but that's better than not having a closure and not having a conversation. Yeah. And not, not knowing how to mean, not improve yourself, but you know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you grow and change with relationships. Sometimes, you know, (laughs) you need to hear the hard stuff sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You become a better person. That's true. Yeah. So we, we got to talk about some difficult stuff now, um, if, <laughs> if you don't mind. All right. Uh, can you kind of discuss the incident that caused all the commotion? Um, what part about it? <laughs> One, how real was it? First of all, I'm going to ask that. How real was it? How Was it played up? Was it, is it a hundred percent legit? What, what, what went down? Uh, what was recorded and put on TV? Is it how it actually happened? Um, I think what was, what, um, what was on TV that was, <clears throat> everything's real, except I think how Hana reacted to what happened Uh, or what I did to her um, costume, I don't think that was her genuine way of expressing herself and, you know, um, talking to me Mm -hmm. in a way that she wanted to talk to. And, And so at that moment, you know, I'm, I'm kind of not surprised, but I was taken out of my place because after three months being with her and, you know, just hanging out with her and building that relationship. And then suddenly she's like this, it, it it didn't, it didn't connect with me. And so after I left the show and um, I talked to her on the phone and you know, because we hadn't talked since I got off the show and it's been like maybe like a month or a month and a half after. And so she told me that, you know, before that incident, she was talking with like the producers and they were telling her it's, do you, they're like trying to build up something, you know, just trying to put something into her so she would go out of her way to react in a certain way to make even more drama or commotion of that sort. So, are they putting words in her mouth or just emotions? You think giving her more emotions than that? I think just leading her the way by saying, you know, do you think? do you think it's really okay for him to just do that? Like, mm. and I, I heard words from her that, you know, she's like, she said that yeah. those people told, told her, you know, may, maybe why don't you do a slap or do something more extreme? Mm. And, you know, Hana's a very pure person and she's a person who likes to see people around her pleased, you know, like, because also she is a wrestler, right? Mm-hmm. she's she's someone who shows that outside and she knows what people wants mm-hmm. or what people want from the outside and so i think she thought through and that just led her to like going through that and building up and just shouting and just talking to me in that way but on that phone you know she's like even when she's she told me that 
while she's talking and she's shouting at me, she she felt bad for me and she she was just very sorry that that happened. And mm-hmm. so, I <clears throat> hearing that from her that made me feel relieved, or I felt I understood her more at that time because that was. That wasn't real. The the way she reacted, mm. that wasn't her. You know, that's not what she would really actually do in a real life situation if that happened without the cameras. You know. Yeah. So sitting sitting there and getting yelled at, I mean, what what's going through your mind in the moment in that moment where you're like, holy crap, she's she's letting me have it. What are you thinking? I. I have to, I can't, there's nothing I can say except for sorry, right? Yeah. It, it, if I say anything, she'll just gonna, she's just gonna take that and, you know, get even more heated up. So, yeah. um, probably make her calm down and, um, actually talk to her without that emotion yeah. of just, because it, one, once in your, you're in that state of emotion, you know, you, you don't listen to people, right? Mm-hmm. Right. You don't you don't you don't you don't hear what they're trying to say or their perspective and so you just it it just it doesn't become a conversation it's just a a, a word battle between each other so did you um, kind of rack yeah. your brains after that trying to like figure out what you know I I know I goofed up I mean what what did I do to 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 make her react that way Yeah I, you know after that I the day after that you know I I had to just sit myself in a room or, and I also went outside in a cafe and just think through myself what happened and what can I say to her Mm -hmm. to feel, to actually understand to her that I don't have bad intentions. I didn't do it on purpose. I, me just, that was me just fucking up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and, Every, so, and everybody does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah everybody does that. Yeah. Yeah. Was know. there any worry about how, it, like, okay, this is being filmed for TV. How am I going to look when this airs on TV? Did that ever enter your, your mind? Yeah, for sure. Um, I was not scared, but it's just, you know, once it comes up, you, you don't know how people react, mm-hmm. right, until it actually comes out. So, that was a little scary. Were you more, the thought process after it happened was, boy, people are going to hate me for, for doing this. Or was it more people are going to think of a certain way of Hana because she reacted the way she did? I think it was more of like, oh, people are going to hate me. Mm-hmm. Or not hate me, but people are going to see me in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Of because you don't usually like put that out there, right? How much, like, even if you screw up, there's a limited people that will understand that screw up. Mm-hmm. But now it's like worldwide, everyone knows, you know? And so I, I think I was worried about that, but. Mm, yeah. Just, I hate to use the word regrets, but I mean, the, the, are, are there regrets with, with what happened there? Um, for me, I don't have regrets in my life mm-hmm. because I, I do what I can do. I do the best mm-hmm. and that's, that's me just trying my best at, you know, what's in front of me. Mm-hmm. And so I think I did that and but of course there's more things that I could have done, mm-hmm. you know, even after going on the show, I could, I could have talked to her more. I could have called her more. I could have like texted her more, like check up on her and, you know, mm, because after having the first um, call, after I left the show, you know, we talked to each other and we talked about, you know, the incident and the money. And she was like, no, I don't, I don't even need the money. 
And so I was like, oh, you know what? Why, why, why don't we, you know, dress up, go somewhere fancy, nice, mm-hmm. and, you know, just have fun. And she, she was like very down for that. And, Kai, you know, as far as the timeline goes, Kai, is this before or after the, the episode started airing that you had conversations with her? Um, it was after. Okay. Yeah. So she, like she told me in that phone call that, you know, those that aired and every time she looks into her inbox, you know, she's getting that hate mail of, you know, like die or uh, why are you so crazy? Or, and I think that that's a lot of, of voices that come into you, right? Mm -hmm. Like thousands, I bet you thousands of those just coming your way. And I talked about this a little bit before, but if there's a hundred like comments and 99 of them are very good, very heartwarming, you know, tells you you're amazing, good job. And like, even that one comment Mm -hmm. comes like, Oh, you're, 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 you're so bad. You're, I hate you or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. that stings you that, that resonates with you way more than those 99 comments. Like even if it's that small amount mm-hmm. and so receiving that end on end, you know, a lot of that, that hurt her a lot. And she opened up to me after we talked was that, you know, she was hurting herself and, she really couldn't take it anymore. And so she was hurting herself. And I asked her, you know, are you all right right now? And so she told me that, you know, she's all right. She's good right now. And because she realized that having the people around you and the family and friends, if they are happy, if they feel joyful, then that's the only thing that matters and she should feel joyful. And so she under, understood that comment or she understood that concept that, that those hate hating comments, the people that don't even know you, you know, these people don't even know you. They don't, they know like five seconds of your life, but, but you know, you, you've, she's lived what 23 years. You don't, she, they don't know how they got there. They don't know how she's, She's climbed up, she, how much she struggled, how much she cried, you know, and they know nothing about that. And they, they can only say those mean comments from the outside perspective of what they felt. And, but she, she understood that concept of, you know, those people, those negative comments don't matter to her. And so that, that made me relieved. And, um, but Kai, yeah. Kai, how, how, yeah. How helpless did you feel knowing that, people were saying she was terrible and bad doing something to you, but you weren't feeling the same way as those people that were saying the negative comments. I mean, did you just want to go on the rooftop and just start shouting that, Hey, this is, you guys are wrong. You know, you're wrong about this. Yeah, I think that would have been good. But at the same time, even if I did that, you know, people would be like, no, you're wrong Mm. or something like that. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah. I know, uh, like, uh, um, Shacho also gets a lot of online hate, and um, he, I, on Twitter, in Japanese at least, he's constantly, like, retweeting stuff and yeah. uh, saying, like, hey, like, don't talk about me like that, but then there's so many influx, like, that just triggers more people into mm-hmm. giving him more messages, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard to confront that, I think, online. Yeah, the what trolls. kind of What kind of feedback did you get, Kai, on social media from people? Um, for me, honestly, 99% are very genuine, very good, good messages, people who care about me. Um, I, I rarely get those nasty comments. Um, maybe like 1% nasty comments, but they hurt. They don't hurt because I understand because I I don't care. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care how people see me. I don't care if people like me. I don't care if, if people think about me a certain way because that's that's just me, you know? That's me trying to be me. And if you don't like that, it's 
I, I can't do anything about that. Right. So, yeah. got got <laughs> do you think Hannah's purity and, and naivety a little bit made her more susceptible to, to taking those yeah. kind of comments to heart? Yeah. And I think there are a lot of people that go on the show of Terrace House who are like that, who <clears throat> still haven't found themselves 100%, who still don't know, you know, um, how maybe the world works or how things work. And they just go in because they want to. Uh, and... Yeah. yeah, but yeah. When's the last time you talked or had a communication with Hana? Um, probably texted her around maybe a week before mm -hmm. she passed away. Yeah. What What are you thinking when you're hearing the stories about what happened to her? Uh, what kind of stories? the about you know the the tweet she put out and the picture she put out what what's what do you how are you wrapping your head around all of that without mm. without going crazy i had to take my time um i had to I had to actually think and feel what was what happened I, d I didn't understand, you know, certain things. I didn't understand why it happened. I didn't, I didn't understand. And that's one thing that I wish I was able to do more was f because she was, she opened up to me on the show, right? Mm -hmm. She, she came to me and talk about, you know, her love life and stuff. And so I wish she was able to do that with me, with, you know, her problems at that time. And, but I wasn't there. So mm, I think I was also in a state of, like I said, like not trusting people. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's hard. And so I had to take time off, you know, everything and just be, be with myself. And like some, some people even told me, you know, don't you have anything to say about this after she passed away? You know, don't you have anything to say to her death about her death? Um, but at that time I thought I, there's no way. Cause you know, I, I'm, I don't want to like bash other terrorist house members or like say anything negative, but it's just that, you can't, there's no way you can come out with a genuine statement that actually matters, that actually, actually, you actually thought about the whole situation, understand it and have a word about it within the next day. And then you post it on social media. Right. I, I, I think there's no way, but, and that's just, that's some, I read everyone's post about that, but I don't remember anything about what they said. I don't remember anything about, you know, what they were talking about because it's, it's, it's not, it's not a thought out words, you know, you can't, there's no way you can understand how complicated the situation is and you already have something to say. Right. So, yeah, I just had to take my time and, and, you know, find my way of expressing what, what do I feel about it? So, you know, I, I painted, I, I wrote poems, I wrote a vlog, I, a blog, I came out with a video just to different ways to express myself. And yeah. even that, that took me like more than two months after the incident. So. Yeah, like it takes time to process grief. So um, yeah. I remember on your blog, you mentioned that you attended her funeral, right? Yeah. Uh, did it, How did you get in contact with her mother? And what was it like seeing Hana for one last time? Um, Chacho um, has been in contact with her mom. So he told me about it 
And so me, Shacho, and Bibi, we all went together. Wow. And seeing her for the last time, mm, it was very hard. It's because I saw it in reality of mm-hmm. what actually happened. Yeah. And a loss of a pure soul that impact ha, that can have an more impact throughout the world right? right and so like i would just see her in in that casket just laying there with makeup on and her costume on and i don't know i i, I didn't have any words i just started tears coming out of my eyes and i couldn't stop i couldn't stop crying maybe for like 40 minutes and you know but i i talked to her mom for the first time and you know she she came up to hug me and told me that uh, there there's nothing to worry about nothing is your fault and she Hana even told me that you guys were going to go out to eat and she was very excited for that day. Mm. And so, yeah, it was hard, but I'm, I'm glad I went to see her for the last time. And, you know, that's, but even after that, you know, I, I sometimes do see her through um, nature, like just being like the other day I went to go paint um, a big canvas, like three by three meters by five meters on the beach. And, you know, after painting that, I just looking through the ocean and the waves, the sound of the waves coming in and the sun hitting the surface of the water, you know, just sparkling and the wind and just yeah. feeling that I, I was able to, you know, just talk with her and communicate with her and so i understand that you know she's she's everywhere if if i let it be yeah you're right and that's what's so great about art you can connect with people that way too yeah 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 and i i know like i don't even need to say this you already know this probably but you should be proud of yourself i think you've done your best with the cards you've been dealt with and um, now you're helping other people too with your art and your blog and uh, you started your own podcast a while ago, right? Um, yeah. And uh, I kind of want to segue into talking about, you know, what's it, what you're seeing for the future for yourself. Um, so I noticed that you have one episode out in English and three episodes out in Japanese and they're yeah. kind of handled differently. Like in the English episode, um, you're doing it solo and you're yeah. talking about uh, if if people give a shit, they'll listen. <laughs> if not, then whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which I love. And then um, on the Japanese one, it's more uh, formal, I guess. Or not formal, but like it's a standard like radio show, Hark Radio. Yeah. And you have a co-host named Masaya Motomura. <laughs> and you talk about all this stuff and you have guests. So I'm just wondering, you know, uh, what goes into making a podcast for you and uh what's the process been like um so f- for hark radio so as you said masaya is my co-host um he's a weird guy right and so he has this potential of being um i don't know just i, I don't know how to explain it but he's just like a special guy that he, he doesn't even understand about it because he's <laughs> <laughs> and so i just have to keep messing with him and keep like um um expanding of what his view is because he he's he's lived in japan his whole life right. he's still like 22 and he 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 i don't know he doesn't know a lot i guess but he he's a very very good guy very trying hard and so if i can just keep getting the funny out of him i have to um challenge him so he can be funny and be more of himself because i i think he's still at a place where he's just trying to please everyone 
and please people and but if i can just like mess with him yes yeah okay, well, i like what, how you nudge him with like the english corner and stuff it's so hilarious <laughs> <laughs> hey kai one quick question before we get yeah. out of here um the legal battles going on right now with kyoko and um the network and you're kind of in, in the middle of that as well yeah. how how deep are you really willing to go in with kyoko to to make sure that whatever justice is in this i'm not even sure what that is man that that it, it's we find justice or we find you know whatever kyoko is looking to, to get out of this how, how deep are you willing to go with kyoko on this well i i think i need to know where she wants to go and, and wherever she wants to go i think i'm down with you know whatever i can do to help if i can spread the awareness of it i'm down to do that if i if i have to do uh well i think what i'm very good at is making design making art about you know what happened or making t-shirts with the awareness you know and so i have my part of what i'm very good at and so i i think for her i'm not 100 percent sure you know what she actually wants from all of this and I, of course it's the npo it's the awareness of that mm -hmm. but with the legal things i think she just wants the the tv to acknowledge what happened mm -hmm. because at this moment they haven't acknowledged you know what happened to um hana and how she reacted to the costume and for me there's no way hana is going to be lying about what happened what the producers told her to you know make her feel that certain way she even telling her mom you know she wasn't able to tell her easily they were in a car and like she was crying and she told her that this happened this actually happened and so there there's no way that's a lie there's no way that's something that didn't happen but the tv what they're doing is they're not acknowledging it they're not trying to take the fact for a fact take reality in just because they want to be seen good or they want this all to go over them so they can just do their own thing again or they don't want to be seen a certain way by the japanese people and so i think i honestly think that's something stupid that's like they're adults you know they should see the problem they should understand the problem and they tr they should try and solve the problem for the better and so this would never happen again and so i think her mom wants that and wants them to come out and say okay this actually happened and i think that would actually make her you know relieved so much more right now if that happened and so i think that's what she's looking for and so the other day i talked with uh lawyers of hers just to put all the stories together and those lawyers are going to be talking with um i guess it's it's like a um, organization in japan looking over like different tv networks and seeing if they're what they're doing is is humane or what they're doing mm -hmm. is like actually right you know and if 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 those people uh, look through you know the story and see what happened and thought this wasn't humane this wasn't right then they would be talking to uh, probably fuji or the production company which is east entertainment and they would i guess having a word with them and i think that that might sound like it's not enough but even if that's a possibility of happening and making those people understand that this just isn't a business this right. this is you know someone's life this is this is something way more than that you know i feel like in that way those people are lost in their lives they they don't they don't know what's important they They've they've given so much to TV and now they're dedicated to that that they they, they lost themselves they lost their humanity side and so if if 
if that could impact and and let them understand of you know what happened happened and so what's the problem maybe we can fix this for a better future for mm-hmm. something you know a change yeah. kai if somebody walked up to you and said hey they're asking me if i want to be on terrace house what would you say to them if they if they ask you your opinion like hey should i go on terrace house or not what would you say <laughs> <laughs> um damn um go for it you know go for whatever if you want to do it if you want to do it you have to do it right yeah if not then why why are you doing it yeah yeah Yeah. it's fair kai i can't thank you enough for for doing this and and being so open with us uh can you tell us where we can find you on social media uh social media um instagram kai coxa um youtube kai kobayashi um i'm coming out with a new website very soon it's called eddiehark.com um it just has uh what it what am i up to um t-shirts um art that i'm gonna put up for sale i hear you have nice t-shirts (laughs) <laughs> i told him all about it <laughs> thank you i'm coming out with even more you know higher quality in, uh, materials so I, I, that's something to look forward to for for if for me you know yeah just put that out there so yeah i i think i think i'm more i'm gonna be more active outside of instagram uh i i don't i don't i i don't think instagram is my way so it's like yeah yeah. Well, Farah, where can we find you on social media? You can find me at Farah Hakase, F A R R A H A K A S E, on Instagram and Twitter. All right. And I'll put all those uh, ways to find you guys on the show notes as well. So, again, Kai, uh, honestly, man, can't, can't thank you enough. Uh, Farah, can't thank you guys enough for, for doing yeah. this. It's uh, Kai, you're a really brave man. And. Uh, <laughs> I, I say that with all honesty. I, I, I couldn't do what you're, I couldn't do what you're doing right now to being so open and, and stuff. And I, I couldn't handle it the way you handle it either. I would be a, a complete uh, basket case. And, and uh, I look up to you for, for, for stepping up and, and, and doing the right thing for Kyoko as well. Yeah. Thank you very much.